All right, Tina, we're working to the last segment here, business and branding. We're going to have a conversation on the business branding side of things. I got to tell you, I was, today's chat about everything was, uh, was inspiring for me because I think a lot of guys just don't know how to get themselves started. And I just, the, the nuggets that MC dropped and even just the elastic band thing. If you're in your head today, just put an elastic band on yourself and get moving. Mm -hmm, just yeah. simplifying it with a tactic. So well, that's, yeah. as Johnny says, that's what we're all about. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Let's dig into some business and branding conversation for a few minutes before we wrap up the show today. What do you want to talk about today? I think for me, the, the discussion that I really want to have is related to, fuck, where are my notes? Da, 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 da. That's my There we go. I know, right? I put yeah. it in the wrong, I put it in the wrong thing. So what I really want to be able to do is talk about along this theme that we've had here, reaching your full potential by yes. embracing discomfort. And yes. I think that's the part that we don't talk enough about, especially as it relates to building your brand, especially as it relates to building a business. There's a lot of discomfort involved in that. So that's the conversation I want to have today. Let's start with just this idea of what does that even make you feel? What does that make you think? When I say building a business, building a brand is all about embracing discomfort. Tell me about an, an example that you've had to experience of exactly that. Yeah, I think when I hear that, what I hear is what many don't want to do. That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. I my, my sneaking suspicion is when people hear that, it's just easier not to go and embrace discomfort. And I think that's the whole yeah. point of the show, right? Which is maybe we can give you things to consider to help you achieve those big goals because to achieve big goals, there's going to be discomfort. And listen, Richie's buddy, Tommy, Tommy's not running with his junk hanging out. There's obviously discomfort there. John's yeah. talked about discomfort to achieve crazy things. The reality is to achieve massive, audacious goals, there's going to be discomfort. And I think that's, I know it sounds really cliche, but unless you don't want to go down that path, then you're just, you're not going to achieve that big audacious goal you're looking at. Where do. does it come from though? This idea that of course you have to embrace discomfort. That's an obvious, like that you would have to, but where does it come from that we grow up thinking that's not the case? I don't know where my idea of I'm the people that I'm inspired by, they've just got it all figured out. The people that I'm inspired by, it's not hard for them. It's easier for them. Like, where did that come from? Why do we have that mentality? You don't talk about it. Nobody talks about it. And I think in many ways, Lauren's comment was the best. As her comment was, why are we calling it performance? If we stopped calling it performance, maybe men wouldn't be worried about going into the bedroom and not performing. So That's talk a valid about, point. So when you talk about discomfort, like I just, we, we see, we, culture is so used to celebrating success. We're so yeah. used to celebrating the hype. We're so used to seeing the end result. Yet we talk on this show about enjoying the process. Like Richie Rich, like who gets out of bed? and says, all right, I'm going to go pace you, Christina. Yeah, what do you mean? I'm going to come hang out and run with you for 80 miles. For what? Because you're looking to win a championship? No, no I'm just going to come pace for you. So Richie has chosen to embrace discomfort because he knows that's just the process to get there. But I just don't think it's a topic that's often talked about because I think we're so, we're, we culture is so used to celebrating what happens at the end. It's that quick, I got to get to the end. Yeah, but there's a journey involved to get to the end. And that right. is the purpose of this show. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I do. And, and I think there's, to your point, there's a number of different things. There's this idea of of like easy life, hard things later, right? Easy life now, hard things later, hard things now, easier life. When you start thinking about things in a very less about the instant gratification and more about the long term goals of what you're trying to do, I think that becomes easier of saying, yeah, if you do the hard things now in life, potentially the goal being active or putting yourself out there when you're uncomfortable, the benefits will outweigh the hard times now. And everything is really relative at the end of the day. I think for me, it's yes, fear of failure. I think where I want to go with this is what's the difference between the rich that is able to do it on his own and embrace that discomfort in that way. And somebody that's, I need accountability. I need somebody to be alongside with me. I, like I, this about me, I have mm -hmm. thought about doing very drastic, extreme things to be like, mm -hmm. I'm okay with discomfort in that moment. I'm not good at the accountability to get that moment. And I do have a very clear idea of like where I'm going and what I want to do. So like the vision stuff isn't the problem. What's the difference between like me and you get up every day and be like, I don't give a fuck. These are my non-negotiables. I'm going to embrace comfort today. And nobody's going to be beside me holding my hand. I think MC said it. And, and this is not a, I'm just going to make a rhetorical statement, not directed at you but just a, a rhetorical statement. I, 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 
I myself, John, these non-negotiables are my values. And, and I, I had to get to, so, so some point in my life journey, it became a, it's the fat kid in the mirror for me. I, mm. I don't want to be that fat kid in the mirror. So I got to do the things that I do so I don't become the fat kid in the mirror. And I know I can speak for John, not being duplicit. I know I can speak for John. He has the same motivation. So again, if I'm going to look to you, perhaps there hasn't been a trigger yet for you in your 41 years. Maybe it's going to happen at 42. Maybe it can happen. And I always joke, Christine, it took me a long time to figure shit out. Like okay. I didn't figure this shit out in my 20s. I didn't figure this shit out in my 30s. Like it took me a long time to figure these things out. So mm -hmm. I'm going to invite you to consider that maybe just that trigger hasn't happened yet for you, which is that, and again, talking to you directly, that maybe just it hasn't triggered yet for you where something has become that non-negotiable, right? Not rightly or wrongly. It's just like, it's just, it hasn't happened yet. And, and, and I think that's for, sometimes somebody has to go to the doctor. I say, okay, Keith, if you don't do this, you're going to die tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, I, I think that's trigger. like the human motivation yeah. in us. It's we always need that really shitty thing. And yeah. something that I've I haven't admitted to very few people, but when my brother in law died by suicide two years ago, I thought I had got that trigger. And I was like, there maybe there's one thing positive that can come out of this. And maybe it's that that was the shitty thing. John says this, don't let any bad thing go to waste. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the shitty thing that I needed. But it wasn't in reality. And what actually happened was I became like desperate about needing to make that trigger a thing, needing to make that trigger like something that changed my life. And everything I did was in desperation because it was like, oh my God, my wife's not in a good place. We're yes. not in a good place. Yes. And, and I really lost sight of what we talk about all the time, which is you still doing the hard things requires the long-term vision, but it also requires the plan on how you're going to get there. So I think I say that to almost warn people too, is just because something shitty happens doesn't also mean that's the trigger. There's got to be something internal that switches, but you want to make sure that you've got those really strong foundations. Otherwise, and I'm very honest about this, I took shit in a very wrong direction. I got very desperate in how I did everything. And my relationship two years later suffered really badly because of it, because I thought that was the thing. And then I shit on myself because I was like, you, really? Your brother dying by suicide couldn't even do it for you? That couldn't even be the trigger? That's deep. And that that's clearly a reflective moment that you've had to have in your journey. And mm -hmm. I think, Christina, that in many ways, as we work towards wrapping this up, is my ambition with this show. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that something that I say or Johnny says or Marty says or you says during our two hours every morning or Richie or Dr. MC or AJ or Jory triggers in somebody's head. And it's, oh. I'm going to get into bed. I'm not going to hit the snooze button. I'm going to make a change. And I know there's somebody who listens to our show regularly, who I talked to yesterday, who made a change. Mm -hmm. Who's like, you know what? I'm going to shuffle my morning routine around so I can focus on my big goals. And I used to do those goals in the evening, but then my day got ahead of me. So something we said in our conversations triggered that moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm hopeful. And I think that's something that maybe we as humans need to maybe work on embracing, Christina, is that if we haven't had that trigger yet, it's okay too. It's like embracing that the trigger hasn't happened yet. So for again, back to you and I, mm -hmm. it's okay that you haven't adopted that non-negotiable yet. It's going to happen. And, and, and I think that's maybe it's allowing ourselves that grace which is I'm moving in the direction to get to that non-negotiable, but I haven't found it yet. And maybe that's part of our process as human beings. And I'm hoping I, that this I show so. gives people the ability to find a trigger moment to say, yeah, I heard Richie do this ultra marathon. I'm going to go try that. Or I heard Christina do this and I'm going to try that. Or I heard Keith talk about this elastic band thing. I'm going to try that. It's just finding those moments, right? To move I, forward. That's what my hope is. Because I think for me, if, if that trigger didn't do it for me, yes. that's probably not what I need then. Probably exactly. what I need is the trigger of, like you said, hearing us say something and then light bulb switching off in our minds and being that's like, it. okay, that's where I, my hope for everyone is that they don't need something traumatic. They don't need a scare. They don't need like an awful thing to happen for it to trigger them. Hopefully having these conversations and us being really open about our journey is enough of that trigger for them. Yes. And I love, and I'll close it with this. I love how MC brought it up. Sometimes yeah. it's putting your pants on in the morning and putting the belt on or putting the button and it's, oh, 
Yeah. That, that, that belt ain't not where it's supposed to be. And next to you, call Marty or John saying, I need to make my belt smaller again. I need some help. And, and I think that's often the trigger for many of us, which is we look in the mirror and we don't feel good about ourselves. We put our pants on, we feel bad about ourselves and then shit happens. But Nation, Business and Branding, Keith and Christina here every single day, 845 East, 945 Eastern time here. Yeah. Uh, talking to you guys business and branding conversation to help you guys move forward throughout your day and build your business and build your personal brand. We're going to get out of here. We've got some work to do. I know you guys do as well. We're back tomorrow, Wednesday in the lab. I think we, oh, we have Jay Malone joining us tomorrow. Jay Malone's mm-hmm. going to join us tomorrow. We're going to talk entrepreneur. Jay has been a very successful entrepreneur. He's got some tips to help you guys move forward as well. So join us tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Mornings in the lab with Keith, Christina, John, and Marty, and of course, producer Jimmy, and so forth. And Flinner, let's get out of here. Great show today. Another great show today. Great. Yeah, really great show. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow with Jay Malone because he is a great transformation story of somebody yes. that was in it. He had this agency. He's working fucking super hard. He's like, why am I doing all this? And yes. what he figured out was he went the route of digital project products and trying to figure out how do I take all this stuff that I know and turn it into something that's going to benefit other people. And that's how I can approach making money. That's how I can approach helping people. So I'm excited to hear his journey as well. So if you're in the digital space, you have digital products and are look and wondering about how to unlock the value that or do something with that in your business, tomorrow's show, Jay's going to offer a lot of insight to help move forward in that. So we got to get out of here. The clock is up, Keith. And uh, there's a sound effect you guys know. Jimmy, let's get out of here, brother. Tina, thank you. Johnny, thank you. Yeah. Marty, thank you. Rich, thank you. Dr. MC, thank you. AJ, thank you. We'll see you guys later. Ciao, guys.